United States has a plan for airstrikes in Bosnia, but the Allies are undecided as the Serbs close in on yet another safe haven. Hello, I'm Terry Anzer, and this is America's Talking In-Depth. Chris? And I'm Chris Matthews in Washington. Welcome to our program. The Bosnian Serbs claim to control yet another UN safe haven in Bosnia and are taking action to expel the thousands of Muslim women and children from Jepa. The United Nations says Bosnia's government is rejecting Serb terms for the surrender of Jepa, terms that include a demand that all men of fighting age be considered prisoners of war. As the fate of Jeppa hangs in the balance, Secretary of State Warren Christopher and Defense Secretary William Perry are in London now discussing possible NATO airstrikes in the region. In short, we would, the first thing we would do would be to dismember the Bosnian Serb air defense that might threaten any of our airplanes. We would not wait. We would not wait until the air defense fired at the airplanes. Terry? Well, Chris, we are joined over the phone from Connecticut by former Secretary of State Dr. Henry Kissinger. Dr. Kissinger, welcome to the program. Thank you. Are we now faced with a choice, airstrikes versus a complete pullout in Bosnia? Uh, I think uh, what we should decide above all is what we are trying to accomplish and not get into an endless debate about what methods we're going to use. What are we trying to accomplish? Well, I think there are two separate problems now. One is the outcome of the war between the Serbs and the Muslims. In that, the United States has only a very indirect interest. The second is the challenge to NATO, uh, taking NATO uh, personnel prisoners and blackmailing uh, the military alliance, which has been the backbone of Western defense. In that, we all have an interest. But why is it so difficult for all of the countries who have an interest to come together on this? The French want one thing, the British want something else. The United States isn't even so sure it has a dog in this fight. Whose responsibility is it to get everyone together in some kind of consensus? Well, we've been sliding into this situation for a long time because we have stated objectives which we were not willing to back up. And so the situation has progressively deteriorated. Uh, at this point, it would be disgraceful if, the, if uh, the United States, Britain and France could not develop a common action. But the question is, for what purpose? Uh, my view is that the purpose we should try to achieve is a ceasefire in Bosnia. But uh, then we do what? not have an interest in where the exact line is. But, but after a ceasefire, then what? After the ceasefire, then uh, after it has settled in, I think the U.N. forces should be withdrawn. Secretary Kissinger, I guess like most Americans, uh, I'm having trouble trying to see the, uh, the pattern here, the model. Where there's no familiar model uh, to use as guidance here. It's not World War II. Is it World War I? No, but the first thing if, uh, we have to go back to is I do not believe the state of Bosnia should ever have been created. Okay. There's never been a, a nation called Bosnia. There is no Bosnian language. There's no Bosnian ethnic identity. There's no Bosnian culture. Bosnia is an administrative unit in which Serbs, Muslims, and Croats have lived in constant hostility, repressed by a superior government uh, in Belgrade. Uh, then, when Yugoslavia disintegrated, the Muslims attempted to create a unified state and the other national entities rebelled against it. That's, that's, what this, that's what this war is about. It was sent forth with the brutality, inhumanity, and violation of human rights that is characteristic of Balkan wars and in which the Serbs undoubtedly committed horrible outrages. Assuming, Dr. Kissinger, that, uh, that our recognition, the recognition by many Western countries of the Bosnian state led to a false sense of security or strength or international security guarantees, suppose we had not done so, what do you think would have been the resolution following the breakup of the, of the former Yugoslavia? Well, what we probably should have done then is to say we want this area partitioned, we will, not, uh, we will, uh, we will impose a ceasefire, and there there might have been a civil war. One of two things would have happened. There would have been a civil war which would have been won by one side or the other. Uh, or we would have, uh, we, our writ would have run. Incidentally, right now I favor the following. 
the consolidation of the UN forces so that they can defend themselves and don't are not taken hostages. Right. Which means that the rapid reaction force should be moved up, that Sarajevo and Gorazi should be defended, uh, that the United States uh, engages in bombing of military objectives in uh, the Serb part of Bosnia unless they agree immediately to a ceasefire. And frankly, I'm inclined to tell the uh, Serbs uh, under Milosevic that the party is over, that they are behind this, and if they don't stop it, the war will spill over into their territory and knock out supply depots uh, on both sides of the border. Dr. Kissinger, do you think that the American public is prepared to back up that message you well, just suggested? Well, nobody has explained to the American public what the issue is. Uh, we dance around, we keep talking about object military, we're talking about uh, various types of military action. Nobody has explained to the American public what the issue is. At this point, the issue is that a small, relatively small country is taking NATO people prisoners. It is defying the United States. And if they get away with this, we are going to have similar outbreaks all over the world without any ab ability to control them. Do you feel the administration has uh, fallen short in its responsibility to say something exactly like what you just said? I think the administration has failed in its whole period in office in explaining to the American public what, it, what is involved there. Well, Dr. Kissinger, uh, one of the... When they came in, they, there was a plan by former Secretary of State Vance, which was on the verge of being accepted which the administration rejected because it was not favorable enough to the Muslims. Since then, the Muslims have lost half of the territory they could have had under that plan. And the situation has deteriorated because, partly because there has always been the expectation that maybe at some point we'll come in and there has been no relationship whatever between our objectives and our willingness to back them up. Doesn't the use of airstrikes against these Serb positions ensure that any later evacuation by the uh, UN forces will be all that more difficult because they'll be much more seen as belligerents in this in this affair? If we try to, if if the UN tries to pull out under present circumstances, in which 25,000 Americans are supposed to go in to help rescue 10,000 French and British, right. uh, the fact will be the Americans will be the last units left there. And we will be caught between these two irreconcilable, irreconcilable parties, both of which, for different reasons, have a, want to get us involved. So in your view, Dr. Kissinger, it would be a mistake to send those 25,000 Americans to do that job? Uh, I think, uh, first of all, if any ground forces are put in, it must be an overwhelming force. Secondly... I can't quite visualize what they're supposed to do because we go in, the French and British move out. Why won't our forces wind up in a position very similar to the British and French today? What about the idea of lifting the arms embargo and letting the Bosnians fend for themselves? Uh, it depends when that is being done. If we do it today, uh, the Serbs will certainly start an offensive in the, so that they can knock out the Muslims before they get the arms. What are we going to do during the offensive? If we don't have an answer to that question, we are not helping anybody. Isn't there the possibility that, it, and just in terms of domestic politics, Dr. Kissinger, that where the, the UN, the American mission, if it comes to this in the next couple of weeks, could be to go in and help Europeans, uh, the NATO force there, remove their equipment from that, that region, uh, and that we would be looking like we'd be taking American casualties on behalf of materiel. Isn't that a danger? Well, uh, one of the arguments is that we should, that the materials should be left behind and that the, just the bodies should be moved out. Uh, on the other hand, we have to keep in mind what happens when uh, British and French forces go in somewhere in the name of NATO, under NATO command, uh, and have to leave without their equipment, and the United States will do nothing or very little. Uh, that will have very serious consequences. I have no problem arguing that we should never have wound up in this position. 
Is this a NATO job or was this the wrong job for NATO? Should NATO have been maintained? It was the wrong job for NATO. It was the wrong idea to believe that one could sit there indefinitely in these, this boiling cauldron. If you read the history of that area, I mean, this is not new. This has been going on for hundreds of years with almost the same parties. Well, Dr. Kissinger, you've done quite a lot to help us understand what's going on there right now, and we thank you very much for joining us over the phone tonight. Thank you. We will talk more about Bosnia when we come right back. It is time for the Allies to take a stand. Get tough or get out. What do you think? Give us a call at 1-800-988-TALK. We'll be back right after this. This is Audrey Meadows. Bang, zoom, here's America's talking. Paid subscription. Call now. We are taking an in-depth look at the worsening situation in Bosnia as the Serbs get ready to expel refugees from yet another safe haven and the United States and Europe waffle over what to do about it. Joining me here in the studio is, well, let's go to Washington first. Uh, Michael Stopford is director of United Amen. Nations Information. And in America's talking headquarters, we have military analyst Jim Dunnigan. Jim, let me start with you. We just heard from Henry Kissinger that we've got to talk tough and maybe back it up with airstrikes. What do you think? Well, the airstrikes will inflame the situation, since the Serbs have shown a certain amount of resourcefulness in dealing with airstrikes. Uh, if they don't have UN soldiers as hostages to chain, you know, in the target area, they'll use civilians, which is something that has been used before by thugs in similar situations, Somalia, for example. Uh, so they'll give you a, a can't-win sort of uh, situation. You want to bomb us? Well, hit the women and children first. What do you think, Mr. Stopford? Is that a reasonable strategy? Talk tough and then bomb? I think that it's uh, obviously extremely difficult to talk about um, bombing operations when you have that kind of complicated situation on the ground and you do have peacekeepers there. But this is something that they're going to have to be working out in London tomorrow at this contact group meeting. After all, the key people involved, are, well, the key capitals involved are Washington, Paris and London. And if they can decide on the appropriate action now, then we'll be moving in the right direction. But well, we already know these countries are miles apart. The French want to go in there and defend the safe havens. The British aren't so sure, and the Americans think they might be able to come up with some airstrikes, but they're not so sure they want to. Where's the common ground here? Well, it's up um, to, obviously, when you have to decide where is the line to be drawn. And one of the things that, uh, as uh, former Secretary Kissinger said, um, you will have to consider very carefully what the, what the objectives are, uh, whether or not, for instance, the, the decision is made to do everything possible to protect the people in Garajde, you know, the 300 uh, peace, British peacekeepers there, um, whether there is some kind of, as he put it, regrouping. This is the kind of thing they're going to have to work out together because the people, the main peacekeeping contingents there are UK and France, while the US, as you know, is... is uh, obviously pushing for some kind of air action at the moment. We'll have to see what they decide in London. Well, Jim, is it reasonable to expect these peacekeepers to defend Garajda or anything else? No, because they're outnumbered. Uh, the major problem with these enclaves is that the, the Serbs see them as bases protected by the UN uh, for Bosniums uh, to uh, strike out with raids which has been happening to a certain extent, which is understandable. I mean, the problem the UN has found itself in is that it has been, become the tool of one side or the other. Since the Bosnians are the weaker side militarily, they have benefited the most, you know, from the UN's presence, and they take advantage of it. But, but what about what Dr. Kissinger said? This is a very small country that is thumbing its nose at NATO and the whole alliance. We've got to tell these guys, look, either agree to a ceasefire or we're going to let you have it. Well, as Dr. Kissinger pointed out, NATO wasn't uh, invented... Uh, you know, put together for the purpose of getting involved in civil wars. It was created to defend Europe against a major conventional invasion, another army. Uh, as Dr. Kissinger also pointed out, Bosnia has never existed as a country, a, a semi-independent province at times, but that's the most it's ever gotten. So it isn't a country that anybody should, is really willing to shed a lot of blood over defending. Uh, the problem is, 
It's an impossible situation. You can't win. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. And now we're faced with the situation that even getting out is going to be a big problem. Uh, to follow on to what Dr. Kissinger said, uh, how many troops they need to get everybody out, it depends. The problem is we're planning on sending a tank division, but we can't send the tanks because the bridges and the roads won't support them. So we're sending